Like zombies searching for brains in a classic horror flick, spring mushroom hunters are seeking out brains of their own. These brains are nothing more than a mushroom that is typically hand-sized and has the appearance of a brain, making this mushroom truly unique in many different ways. Welcome to Morel Truths, the miniseries. I'm Justin Yap, and over the course of several episodes, I will explore the theories, science, and traditions behind the Morel mushroom. Hello and welcome back. As one prepares to go mushroom hunting deep in the woods, you must always think ahead and have a checklist for any sort of expedition you go on. Every good hunter has a set of tools that are essential for mushroom hunting. And usually guys will go with walking sticks. I use a mesh bag when I uh, pick them. A pair of uh, heavy, heavy duty pants. First thing is first, you should dress the part. It may still be a little cold, so try to have several layers of clothing just in case as you can always strip down as the day goes on and heats up. Wear long, thick pants because of thorns and brush can rip bare skin like no other. And boots, just in case it is warm enough for the snakes to be out. Also, wearing a hat. It helps keep the ticks off and it's good for pushing your head through brush. Basically get some canvas pants. They are really gonna protect your legs. And walking through the briar bushes, they get your legs get cut up and your pants get cut up really, really bad. You know, good boots. You want some good waterproof boots because here you end up going through a lot of water, up and down hills and stuff. Long sleeve shirt and definitely a hat too because you're going to be not wanting your head to get scratched either as you're crawling underneath the briar bushes. Searching an unfamiliar area, you should always go with a map or a compass just in case you happen to get lost. Nowadays, a GPS is a more common sight to see. Also, with the GPS, you can save your coordinates to the spots so you can find them again next year easier. Um, a nice sharp pocket knife, definitely an essential. And a good sharp knife to cut the morels off. It should be a small pocket knife, as you don't want to be burdened with extra weight. The blade is used to cut around the bottom of the stems of the morels, leaving a stub, which is believed to grow a morel again next year. I really like to cut them now because uh, it leaves, I don't know, it leaves some of the mushroom behind and hopefully the spores will still be left there for next year. Always slice the, the morels off, never yank them up. You don't want to damage the mycelium. Um, I slice them off at the base. The stem is good to eat too, so you know, I get as much as the, of the stem as I can get. You need to have a bag of some sort, and depending on the area, maybe more than one. The bag can be plastic, but a mesh or burlap sack is preferred for carrying them through the woods. It has been said that the mesh and burlap sacks allow for spores to fall from the mushroom onto the ground as you trample through the woods. Hence, spreading the mushroom around the forest for next year's hunt. A mesh bag so the spores are getting spread as you're hunting, absolutely a necessity. I use a mesh bag when I uh, pick them, either a basket or a mesh bag because just like Johnny Appleseed, it's uh, there's not been any scientific studies done, but it's just logic will tell you that if you put your morels that you pick in a mesh bag, um, they breathe and get air, and the, the spores as you're walking through the woods will drop out and re replant the species. So I just made my own mesh bag out of some old mesh material my grandmother had at the house. A good hiking stick always helps, but nothing that is really heavy. Also, having one with a hook or a point of some sort is an extra bonus. The hiking stick offers the user to push away brush, long grass, and thick vegetation without having to get your hands cut off searching for mushrooms. Once you've made it back to your car, you want to make sure you have some flat boxes or bins to be laid in the trunk for transporting the morels back home. It's good to spread them out because the weight of the morels can actually cause themselves to crumble underneath the weight. Um, you know, keep a water bottle in the car or if you got a backpack with you, keep that in there. Lastly, pack a lunch. Bring water and a bite to eat if you know it's going to be a hike. You never know how long these hunts will go sometimes. Especially if you keep finding morel after morel. And deeper and deeper in the woods you go. So now let's take a look on actually finding some of these morels I keep talking about. Join me in the next two episodes as we learn the tricks and the trades to hunting the morel mushroom.